And so then, I'm just going to say, because the thing was, is then the prosecution said, they stood up, and I'm thinking, okay, what do they got to say? And he goes, Miss Fair, is it true that you study a book called A Course in Miracles? <laughs> and I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, it is true that I study a book called A Course in Miracles. And he goes, and Miss Fair, in this book called A Course in Miracles, do they not say that everything that is, like, not truth is an illusion, Miss Fair? <laughs> and I said, yes, it is. They said, so what you're telling me is that if someone gets cancer, he said, they actually asked for that to happen. Is that true, Ms. Fair? And I said, well, actually, it was such a mir the Holy Spirit just totally, because I had no idea, what the, Spirit what just, say, yeah. the Spirit just spoke through me. I said, well, actually, I was a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I said, and when I was a nurse, and then all of a sudden I heard, objection. And then the, that's judge, when the judge yeah. said, oh, no, I want to hear what she got to say. <laughs> and I said, well, I was actually a nurse. I said, and when I was a nurse, I said, what you actually could see is people's belief systems. I said, ten people could get cancer, and every one of them would react differently according to their belief system. Mm. I said, and so, you know, it was really, that showed me the power of, of that, you know, the power of thought and the power of our mind. And he must not have any more information. And then uh, he said, uh, so, and Miss Fair, so this book, A Course in Miracles, he said, is this a book that is, you know, known? Is this what you teach in your Jesus Christ teaching? Or whatever he was saying. I said, I'll tell you something right now. And I looked right at the jury and everything. I said, I'll tell you something right now. I said, I am here representing Jesus Christ's original teachings that forgiveness heals, and that love is the answer. And I said, and I don't care what book I study. I said, if that's a book I study, then that's the book I study. But I am here to represent God, and I am here to tell you that forgiveness is the answer. And I said, and that's the way that it is. And <laughs> well, this is a guy the courtroom. Well, this is, well, it was. It was good. Oh, quiet. And then he goes, no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> and just the I walked, and then it was like, okay, you're done. And I just looked at the jury because I thought, because I really didn't listen. The God's truth. I don't care if he gets out right, of prison right, right. or gets off death row or not. I'm just here to represent God. I get no outcome, man. Yeah. I'm gonna be happy whether you're in jail or you're not in jail. Right. I got no agenda. Right. I was just here to say what I needed right. to say. And so I was kind of like, see you later, Freeman. You know, like, but but the thing was, is I want to say this because something happened when I was telling him, when I was joining with him, it was like we were in this total holy instant. He was totally locked in my eyes, and I was totally joined with him in truth. And I was there communing with him, like sharing total truth with him, and he was totally receiving it. And there was an experience that I can't even tell you that I experienced that was almost like I was locked into this out-of-time sequence kind of experience with, like, someone accepting and me, you know, it was like, almost like, you know, just like probably what God feels when we accept the truth or something. Right. I don't know. It's a joining of It was like he accepted, he actually received yeah. what I gave him. And, and I could you, feel and then, it. And then you receive it. And then I received it. Well, yeah. We could feel it. Yeah. And we were locked into insane. it. And he was receiving it. It was almost like he was desperate and he took it. And it was like, you know, we were yeah. like, oh. Like that was all that needed to happen. I knew that that was all that needed to happen for me to be <clears> there with him. And I walked out of there. And this is I walked out and I walked past all the people and the thing. They were going. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, oh, my God. And, and when my son was there, he was loud in the corner. He goes, holy shit, Mom, that was powerful. He goes, that's just a miracle that I could see this, right? And he goes, so beautiful. And then it was like done. My job was done, and I walked out of the courtroom. And uh, and I didn't have any care one way or the other. He actually did not get off death row. Uh, so that's, uh, But they told me to be prepared that I'll probably be going to the Supreme Court. But I actually don't feel, I don't, I will not, I don't feel like I need to do anything more. Yeah. Like if they want to use something... But I don't feel like no, I don't have. I'm totally complete in my function that I came to fulfill with God, and and yeah. so yeah. I think it's so beautiful because it's like it's the depth of innocence. Yeah. Like murder. Yeah. You know, and 
think it's just a wonderful gift for yourself just mm-hmm. to be able to go in there and just. I'm well, the wonderful yeah, gift is that the wonderful gift is that forgiveness heals, and that we have the ability to do that and to actually join in truth, which is in the present moment in the holy instant. Like that's where God is, and for me to stay in my relationship with God, I would never keep any thought of anything that's not real. For me to be in at any time that I can be in any relationship that I can experience the love of God, I'm gonna go for it, man. And to that depth, I was like totally. I felt, oh, well, listen, it, it actually hit me the next day. I have to tell you the depth that I was bawling and everything, just the gift that I had, that I felt like I was given from God, that this was, I'd never had any idea until after I did it. Right. The expansion. The expansion of my own mind. I'm like, oh, my God, that that was really, and nothing special, no ego. Mm-hmm. I don't want nothing that's all dirty to think that there's something special with it. it. It just seemed like that seemed to be, and for me, all it does is it makes my conviction in God even more. So I'm here to witness to the glory of God and, and that forgiveness heals and that's all that I'm here to do and that he gave me another great uh, parable to share with the world that you know that any thought of anything that's not love is not real and that's why you can forgive it and let it go and, you, and, and the value of joining in God instead of fear is a miracle and it's our experience with our creator. It keeps us in our experience with the creator. Yeah. It's like the, what the Course says about forgiveness is realizing what I thought I did to my brother has not occurred, or what I thought my brother did to me has not occurred. Right. So it's just a memory that I want to keep in my mind to keep me in hell. In hell, basically. That I want to hold this fear. sword yeah. instead of laying down the sword. And, you know, Jesus says that I am only upset because of my interpretation. Mm-hmm. Lay down the sword immediately. Yeah. There's so many things that, <coughs> you know, we think we can't get over. Right. You know, and that's what I love about this parable is, you know, Lisa's walked through it, and mm-hmm. and it can happen no matter how intense or horrible it seems. It's like it's all available to us mm-hmm. to do that same thing. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, and that's why everything else is just like you just see, like you know, any thoughts that I have that come up in my mind. That's why you just see the pettiness of them. Like you just see, why would I keep anything like that? When they come, they go. It's just like you know, yeah. you just. Because the value of pain. Right, like, what am I into pain? I mean, the whole thing was is when I remember when I first, I realized that that thought of me being a victim was really an identity that I wanted to keep. Right, it gave you a lot oh, of Oh, woe is me. Yeah. You know all the bad things that have happened to me. Yeah. I, that, that story is like, the ego would love that story. I guess this sister was murdered. Right. And, uh, you know. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like it's a real ego booster, yeah. believe me. Yeah. And so it's like I had all these stories that the ego was using to keep me in hell. And now and now it's like that identity of a victim or anything that is a problem outside myself or, or you know, because you didn't love me, because you treated me that way. They're all lies. Yeah, and the thing is that I've noticed about you too is, is that you really have you really have given that story up. It's only called forth when it's for healing. Right. You know, how people can carry on with their stories because they need that ego identification with the story. And, no. that, you know, that's completely let go of with you. I've seen it. No. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Suzanne. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Okay. Dear Jesus. <laughs>